Now, Fox Connecticut Morning News. Straight ahead this morning, fire breaks out overnight on the grounds of Connecticut Valley Hospital. And this morning, everything is back to normal on the rails for Metro North riders. Also, millions are out of work, but economists say the recession has been over four months now. Good Tuesday morning, 6 o'clock. Great to have you here. Logan Burns alongside Sarah French. We'll get to those stories in a moment, but first, let's send it over to Joe Fury in the Weather Center. Good morning, Joe. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Logan. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's, uh, yes, chilly morning out there. We're down in the 30s in some spots this morning. We found uh, 35 over at uh, Ashford this morning and 34 at Bantam. And, uh, well, even 39 uh, coming in from uh, Waterford this morning. So it's a chilly morning. And my a little frost, might find a little fog out there. Otherwise, we're finding clear sky. The moon setting in the uh, west and the sun coming up in the east. And a day that you might go out with a light jacket or sweater, but this afternoon, grab the sunglasses. Just an absolutely another gorgeous, beautiful day ahead. If you're missing summertime, well, it's returning. I'll tell you one in just a few minutes. Right now, Rachel's up 12. Any problems on the roads this morning? One snag, and it's a tractor trailer issue. It's actually on its side, and it's blocking the 40 entrance ramp to the southbound side of I 95. So, other than that, we are very quiet. Here's a look at the speeds in New Haven. You see 52 speeds at around 67. So, again, no major problems there. And then further southbound, we're also looking fine. Again, it's just that entrance ramp that there's the issue on 95 South. So prepare yourself for that. You'll need to hop on the highway either before it or right after it. Let's take you outside. So far, so good. This is looking westbound into downtown Hartford along I-84 by exit 58. Guys? Thanks, Rachel. Firefighters are closely watching the hot spots after a big fire in Middletown. A building on the grounds of Connecticut Valley Hospital went up in flames early this morning. And Fox Connecticut's Tom Lewis is live on the scene with the very latest. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, everybody. The fire is out, but the damage has been done. A building, a total loss here at the Connecticut Valley Hospital Mental Health Facility on Silver Street here in Middletown. We're also video from this fire that began around 1.15 this morning. These buildings had been vacant for some time. They're the older portion of the facility, and this is a very expansive campus, if you will, here. And the fire broke out, uh, creating a lot of smoke, some heavy flames. You can see some of the power ladders in the video. The firefighters were called out. They have their own unit here at CVH, their own fire department. So they also so uh, we're involved as well as Cromwell, as well as Middletown Fire Department. They all got involved in fighting this fire. Nobody's inside. No firefighters were injured. But there's a lot of questions now exactly about what uh, led up to this fire. We did get a chance to speak with David Quinn, who's the fire chief here at CVH. He talked about just exactly what type of building this is. It's all brick, and uh, um, it's been falling down for years now. Uh, 23 years I've been here, and it's been going down quite a while. So this is the first time we've had a fire in it, though. Are these buildings active? They're dormant, right? Yes, there's nobody in these buildings. Now, the chief did also say he was driving in. He could see the smoke billowing from this very high vantage point here in Middletown. So now the question becomes exactly what started the fire. They still don't even know what part of the building the fire began in. They're waiting for daylight hours. We'll have that probably within 45 minutes or so. At that point, they'll be able to go in the building. They'll get the fire inspectors in. They'll try to find out whether or not this was suspicious, whether or not this was simply an accidental fire. We're going to stick around the scene here as well, learn a little bit more about what we can about this overnight fire. Very strong building is Destroyed. However, nobody was injured. Reporting live in Middletown, Tom Lewis, Fox, Connecticut. Thanks, Tom. Metro North service is back on track after some major delays on Monday. Service was disrupted because of this fire under a bridge in New York City. Service was later restored with delays. The MTA's website says all trains and routes are running up to speed. Well, getting around New York may soon cost more. The MTA has held another public hearing geared towards fair hikes on the subway lines. The greatest price increase would be for unlimited monthly riders, but the hikes will affect just about all commuters. The price increase would go into effect in January. The trial of Cheshire home invasion suspect Stephen Hayes should resume tomorrow. The trial was on hold while Judge John Blue was hospitalized. He got sick when some food and medicine did not mix well. The trial adjourned early earlier last Thursday when Hayes reportedly suffered a seizure. Well, this morning, Old Saybrook police are looking for an armed robber. The Subway restaurant on Boston Post Road was robbed Monday night. Police say a guy walked in, pointed a gun at the clerk, took some cash, and then took off. No customers were inside at the time. Police consider the suspect armed and dangerous. Enfield police are trying to figure out how a man died over the weekend. 37-year-old Jason Mayrand was found Saturday. Some residents say that Mayrand was found with a pillow over his face and that he had been suffocated. Police won't confirm that. They say they are not ruling out a homicide, however. An autopsy has been performed, but right now that's inconclusive. Police are still awaiting the toxicology results. 
Hartford police are still looking for a gunman in a deadly shooting on Saturday. 24-year-old Jacoby Dorsey was found shot right uh, in the vicinity of the 800 block of Asylum Avenue. He was rushed to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. We've learned more about the chase along I-84. We reported to you Monday morning. It began with a hit and run in Danbury. Police tried to pull Eduardo Rodriguez over, but he began to lead them down 84 and then down Route 67. The driver later ditched his car and jumped into the Naugatuck River. Police caught up with him and arrested him on several charges, including cocaine possession. In New Haven, two teens are accused of crashing a car while trying to escape from police. Officers were looking for the 16- and 18-year-old for two shootings in the city on Monday. When they tried to pull the car over, the 16-year-old who was driving led police on a chase for several blocks before crashing into another car right in front of St. Raphael's Hospital. The 18-year-old was arrested. The 16-year-old tried to take off on foot but was arrested a short time later. The state is stepping in to help Bristol Hospital. Hospital. State Attorney General Richard Blumenthal is asking Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield to keep the hospital on its network. The health insurance provider said it would no longer cover Bristol Hospital beginning October 1st if they don't come to an agreement on reimbursement rates. As expected, the Hartford Wolf Pack will be changing its name to the Connecticut Whale. We had that for you yesterday. The name change will happen sometime before the end of the season, but the new logo will be unveiled in the next few days. The team's owners would eventually like to see NHL hockey return to Hartford, as well as a lot of people, but the first goal is to rebuild the local market. An average of 4,200 attend each one of the Wolf Pack's games. The team begins its 14th season next month. And over at ctnow.com, our online poll is finding the new name, Connecticut Whale, isn't doing much for many of you. Only one in four say the name is good and brings back memories of the former team, the Connecticut Whalers. Weigh in with your opinion. You just go to ctnow.com. Tell us what you think. Today, the U.S. Senate will take up a vote on the future of the don't ask, don't tell policy. One of Forbes' most influential celebrities is making her voice known that it's time for the law to go. Lady Gaga visited Portland, Maine, to speak at a rally. More than 2,000 people showed up. She's asking the state's two Republican senators to help repeal the military's don't ask, don't tell policy on gay and lesbian service members. Right now, those two senators could be the key votes which Democrats need to win the appeal. The singer instead suggested a policy that should target straight soldiers who are uncomfortable with gay soldiers. Well, there's new complaints against Delaware Senate nominee Christine O'Donnell. The GOP nominee is accused of using campaign funds to pay her rent. O'Donnell says it's the latest in a string of personal attacks against her and her campaign. Economists are saying that the recession has been over since last year. That ruling came from the National Bureau of Economic Research. They say the recession started in December of 2007, and it finished in June of last year. But the group also says growth since then has been below normal. Two areas that have been especially slow to recover, jobs and housing. You probably knew that, though. Right now, nearly 15 million Americans are out of work. Here in Connecticut, the latest unemployment numbers are out. Take a listen. The state lost more than 5,000 jobs in August. Economists say most of those losses were from layoffed federal consensus workers. The unemployment rate was 9.1% in August. That's up from 8.9% in July, but still slightly lower than the national average. Last month, the largest employment increase was in educational and health services, which added about 2,000 jobs. A Connecticut program is lending a hand to help the hungry today. Two volunteers will be making the 21-mile trek from Rocky Hill to Food Shares Distribution Center in Bloomfield, hauling truckloads of food donated by local restaurants and grocery stores. The mission is all a part of the 8th Annual Food Industry Convoy of Caring hoping to end hunger here in Connecticut. It is 6.09 this morning. Much more ahead on the Fox Connecticut Morning News. Is it possible the genetically engineered salmon could be coming to a dinner table near you? Also, one bar is making it possible for you to grab a quick drink on your way to or from the funeral home.